Hi guys and Happy New Year. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stacey if anybody is new and joining me here for the first time. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy my videos and keep coming back. So this week's video, actually pause. I have noticed that I say so, so much when I'm editing my videos. I'm just like, is that the only word that you know? But anyway, I digress. Um, also, I'm gonna slip it in here before I forget. Um, I do live get ready with me's on Sunday mornings at 9.30 GMT. I will leave my Instagram handle for you here. And um, yeah, come and hang out, it's pretty fun. So that's cool. And then now we can get into this video. So Christmas is over, Hanukkah's over, Kwanzaa's over, and you have these palettes that you've bought at Christmas and now they're kind of redundant because glittery eyeshadow in the first week back to the office is probably not the look that we're going for. So <laughs> I decided that I am going to create a very natural look using one of these palettes. I'm revisiting the Bobbi Brown Smoky Crystal palette again. That was the only one that I bought this um, Christmas period. And I'm gonna be using it to create a really natural daytime appropriate look that you can wear to the office, wear anywhere really, and get your money's worth out of your palette. Now like I'm really conscious cause I was just gonna say so again and I was like, oh, there it goes again, so, but just roll with it. So let's get into this week's makeup. Also, another thing I'm going to do, or I'm aiming to do in this video, is to create a really like dewy look using only powder products. How's that gonna work? I'm not really sure. I think I have a method. I'm gonna give it a go. It's probably nothing revolutionary, but for me, because I use a lot of liquid products on my channel, I thought it'd be fun to kind of switch up and go back to powders a bit more, apart from concealer, because why powder concealer? And yeah, let's see how it goes, right. Firstly, I'm taking my Benefit 24 hour brow setter and I'm brushing up Struggleina. And I must admit, in the years since I've been doing this channel here, this little brow has come on leaps and bounds and Mama is very proud. So I'm just brushing up my brows and set them in place. I'm using my NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer in Amand. And I decided to be a vigilant citizen and actually finish off my old tube. I was so excited, I bought a new one, I think last week, and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna use this. And I was like, Stace, the old one's not empty yet. Finish that first. So this is kind of how I put my concealer on. And I am loving a little bit of brow highlight at the moment. I, I go through phases, sometimes I hate this, sometimes I love it. At this moment in time, I love it, I'm digging it. I'm taking a Real Techniques base shadow brush and I'm just gonna blend in my concealer. Next, I'm revisiting some old favorites of mine. These are the Mineralized Skin Finish from MAC, and I absolutely love these powders. They are mineral-based products, but they, they have like a really nice soft focus blur on the skin. They're very, very easy to use. They give brilliant coverage that looks really natural. And as it gets shiny, like as your oils come through, it looks really beautiful. So it's not like one of those powders where you put it on and you get a bit oily or sweaty and you end up with lots of little dots on your face. That doesn't happen with this powder. So yeah, I used to use this all the time before I was doing YouTube, even back when I worked at MAC. This was kind of like my staple for my skin. So I'm gonna use that today. First I'm taking dark and I'm taking this um, Kiko, not Kiko, Stila flat top kabuki brush, I'll show you it. I think it's a number 30. I'll see if I can find it and put it in the description box. And just for your reference, I put all of the products that I use in my description box. So I just take this and literally just buff it on. And you'll see the magic that it creates. So I like to use dark underneath my eyes. And let's just have a moment. Look at that side of my face in comparison to this side of my face. Now I can see this looks way smoother, it still looks really realistic. It's not as shiny, but that's fine. But the coverage is really good. And if you want more, you just keep packing on more. So I'm gonna pop a bit more on. And then I like to use dark deep on the lower half of my face. It's a bit more red. And it's kind of suits my coloring in this area a bit better. So, I don't know if you can see this on camera, hopefully you can. Let's move my face around a bit, see if it catches. Mm, let's see on this side. Yeah, it's a bit more noticeable here. I have this rash on my chin, and I found out it's called perioral dermatitis, which just means dermatitis around the mouth. So it's a bit like eczema, 
and I'm really annoyed that I have it because I've always had really good skin like I never had acne when I was growing up or anything like that and I think I got this because if you don't know if you follow me on my Instagram you will know but I was pregnant recently and fortunately it didn't go to term and hormones can bring about things like this and this came out when I was pregnant like just just yeah when I realized I was pregnant I noticed this rash on my chin so um I haven't been pregnant for like over a month now and I still have this rash on my face and it's really really frustrating me so I might just keep using this for a while um whilst I'm trying to figure out my skincare because now I have to like pay attention to skincare and not just use whatever and see if I can help get rid of this faster so that's the skin done like I said before, I'm using the Bobbi Brown Smoky Crystal Palette again. And for those guys who watch my channel already, you will know that I have broken one of the eyeshadows in this palette, which is really annoying. Um, I'll link the other two videos up here so you can have a look. So I'm going to very gently and carefully show you this palette again. It's so beautiful, but yeah, I've messed it up. I don't know. I think it was Amanda. I'm going to blame it on him because he can't tell me otherwise. But I'm going to hold this up. I'm going to be using this colour here. And this is always so tricky. This colour here. And possibly, <laughs> I told you, well, yes, this colour here as well, to create a really natural daytime look. So, firstly, I'm going in with a, I think this is a 228, yeah, 228 crease brush from Zoeva. And I'm taking the dark brown of those three colours I just showed you, and I'm just running that through my crease. I like it because it's quite cool, but it doesn't run grey, so it's kind of, yeah, useful in that way. I could probably use it for my brows. If you are a kind of person that uses powder in their brows as opposed to pencil, this colour would definitely work in the brow. It kind of, this is a really bad description, but this is the only thing that I can think of for this colour. It reminds me of um, plaster that you like plaster walls with, but like a slightly more grey version of it. That's what I get. That and calamine lotion that you use and you've got chicken pox. They're the, they're the two colours that are coming at me, but more grey. So I'm going to use a 239 and just pat this colour all over my lid. So I'm just taking that all along the mobile lid right up to the crease. Then I'm taking a smaller brush. This one is from Hakuhodo. I can't remember the name of it. What I remember is that it was expensive but it's beautiful and it feels really nice around the eyes. So yeah, I love it. I'm going to go back into the dark brown colour. And just use that to blend these two colours together on the crease of, on the edge of the eye, not the crease. I don't know if you guys do this either, but sometimes I watch these videos where like people are doing their makeup and they do the whole eye. So like they'll do a cut crease, lashes, liner, glitter, brow highlight, all that good stuff on one eye only and then move to the next eye. And I'm like, how how can they do that? Like, I have to do mine in stages to make sure that I get the balancing right. I don't know if I trust myself to do one eye the whole way through from beginning to end and then try and replicate it on the other one. This feels like, this makes much more sense to me to do it this way around. Then I'm going to take the same Hakuhoda brush, go into the dark brown again, and just run a tiny bit under the eyes. I'm just trying to create a tiny bit of definition. I don't really want it to be smoky. That's why I'm not using a brush that's really tightly packed because I want it to be really soft underneath the eye. Now all my eye makeup's finished, I'm going to go back to my brows. And I'm using the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil in number five. This has been like my ride or die eye pencil pretty much all of last year. And I'm just gonna go in and fill in my brows. I like super, super soft brows. I don't like them to look like I've put anything in them, so you probably, maybe you can see what I'm doing, but it's really not a massive change from how they look without product in them. I have invested a lot of time <laughs> letting my brows grow in to try and get the shape that I want naturally with just hair. So I just go in and fill in some of the gaps because brows are hair, not fur. I do not like solid block brows that are the same texture the whole way along. It's just so, so fake. And I don't like it. I like them to look like hair. So I keep some of the gaps in to keep it looking as realistic as possible. But I honestly think the secret to my brows looking like I haven't tried that much is because I let them grow a lot. 
brows are on, I'm happy with those. Next I'm going to move on to eye pencil and today I am using a blue one. Now the reason why I picked blue is because it will make the whites of my eyes look whiter and with all the excessive partying, late nights, drinking and food consumption over the holiday period, most people aren't looking their best in January. This is an indigo blue, it's not very bright, it's quite a deep colour, deep blue, but and probably most people won't read it as blue, but it will definitely make the eyes look brighter. So that is the plan of action for today. So I'm just taking this uh, cold pencil and just running it on the inside of my eye. Right, now we're going to move on to, hmm, let's do some highlight actually. I'm using these two. These are from Danessa Myricks. They are her um, highlighting powders and I'm using the colour... Well, I'm using two colours because I don't know if you can see, this one's really icy and silvery and this one is really golden and I don't want either of those. So I'm going to mix them and I'm taking this beautiful brush that they don't make at MAC anymore because this is the natural hair one and I, all their brushes are synthetic now but this is a 137 and I'm literally taking a tiny bit, a tiny bit of the silver then I'm going to mix it on the palm of my hand and then just lightly sweep that on the sides of my cheek. Now, I'm using this because, I've said this many times before, I am not a fan of powder highlight. I will pick a cream and a liquid every day over these. But because of the technique that I am planning to use today, I think I might be able to get away with this. Like at the moment, that is just too glittery and too fragmented for the way I like my makeup to look. I hate highlighter that looks like powder on the skin. It's just not a thing. But I think there's a way that I can make it work. So we will wait till the bitter end to see if this works or not. Next, I am taking some blush. We all need a little pick me up in January. Sorry guys, I know I use it all the time, but it is really one of my favourite blushes. I think it just makes me look really awake and alive, and that is Fleur Power from MAC. So I'm just buffing that on. I'm kind of concentrating it mostly on the apples, but I do bring it down and up a little bit so it doesn't look like, ugh, stuck on my face. Okay, so I'm happy with that. Next thing is mascara. I am using Extended Play Giga Black. My favourite, um, if anyone is new, I like to use, they have a double cleansing, I'll call it double mascara ring technique, where I like to use two mascaras layered on top of each other. Ordinarily, it is this one, and then my In Extremes, I mentioned 3D Black Lash from MAC, but today, I'm going back to my Hourglass one, because I haven't really showed it any love in a couple of videos, and I do actually really like it. Also, I'm going to slip this in here because I forgot to say earlier, I have deliberately not put any top liner on my eyes because I want my eyes to look bigger and more open. And when I do eyeliner, it can steal your lash length and make your lashes look shorter. It happens to me. I don't know if it happens to you, but it definitely happens to me. So I find that when I leave my lid bare and I don't have any liner on and just do loads of mascara, it makes my eyelashes look longer and then makes my eyes look more open. That is the logic behind everything today. Then I'm using my Hourglass Caution Mascara over the top. The wand isn't bent, I bent it myself. I generally bend all my metal wand mascaras. Some mascaras, the tips of them are rubber so you can't bend them, but if there's a metal wire running through the tube, you can angle it and it makes it easier for me anyway to put on my own mascara. So. I like to do that. <laughs> I'm now taking a newly sharpened Costa Riche cold pencil. I use this a lot as a lip liner. And I'm just gonna line my lips. And like always, press and roll. Then I'm revisiting this Bobbi Brown Luxe Liquid Lip High Shine Lipstick. And the colour I'm using is Au Naturel. I haven't used this on my YouTube, I don't think, but I've definitely used it on Instagram a few times. So, um, yeah, I'm going to pop this on. This is super, super pigmented. A little bit goes a really long way, so I'm not going to use much of it. That's pretty much going to be it. And then we just, the lip exercises come in, just press and roll. 
a little bit more lip pencil. So the last thing I'm gonna pop on is my Beauty Pie Brown Sugar Lip Gloss. I really love this color. And just kind of go over everything just to soften it all a little bit. Okay, so now this is the bit where I'm gonna try and make this look dewy. I'm taking some Fix Plus. I'm taking some Fix Plus. Um, this is a very old bottle that I have. There's hardly anything left in the bottom. I don't know if anyone else finds this, but when Fix Plus gets to the bottom, it doesn't spray as good, so we'll see what happens. I'm just gonna wet my whole face. Yeah, look at that. Look what it's done. Ugh. Okay, don't use an old bottle of Fix Plus to do this. I should really use like an Evian cooling mist or quarterly, but I don't have those at home at the moment. I'm just gonna work with what I have. Now I have to go back in and patch up this eyeshadow, which has really, really, really got on my nerves. But this is real life and this is what happens. So I'm just going to go in here, try and fix this and not make my eyelashes dusty. I have a new bottle of Fix Plus here because I had a funny feeling that that was gonna happen. This one sprays better. So let's start further away this time. And you can see, yeah, it's definitely working, yay. It's turning that powdery highlight into something looking a lot more creamy. Oh, I still have, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna spray my whole face and then I'm gonna fix my eyeshadow after because this might continue happening. I love Fix Plus, I hate the bottle because the spray is always so heavy. You can't trust it. And it's fine if you have like, shimmery eyeshadows on because you don't notice it but when you have mattes you can see what it does it's annoying i'm just gonna pat these massive blobs of liquid that are on my face and the eyes look so good as well <clears throat> all right let's just go let's just go I need to sort out the, the misty spray nozzle thing. Because this is a no bueno. Right. <sighs> my skin is completely wet, which is fine. My eyeshadow has just disappeared. So I'm going to go back in for the final time and fix this shiz. So, yes. What would I do differently if I was to do this again? I'd probably do all the skin, make that dewy, and then do the matte eye. I should have known better than to try and do that, all that Fix Plus with powder shadow, like matte powder shadow on my eyelid. But this is a really easy, wearable look that you can continue to use from your palettes that you bought at Christmas. So don't just like leave them tossed to the back of your makeup drawer. There are always colors and combinations in there, if it's a good palette anyway, that you can reuse. So I'm looking at this makeup, right? And I'm like, mm, it's nice, but I'm really annoyed with what happened with the Fix Plus. And in real life, I wouldn't just leave it. So I'm gonna show you what I would do if this happened to me in real life, and it was my own makeup, right? Not a client's, but my own makeup. How would I save this face? And this is what I would do. I would take some concealer on my eyelid. I use concealer a lot as um, primer and I would go over the matte part of the shadow and I would just mix those two colours that I mentioned before, the shimmery colour and the, let me just show you, this colour up here and then the original grey colour that we had on. Because a shimmer can hide a multitude of sins so when something like that happens literally just take my shadow brush well this was my concealer brush but now I've put it into the shadow and just mix it between the two of them I have got a disposable mascara wand and I sprayed it with fix plus and I'm gonna get a little mirror I'm gonna bend it as well 
so it fits the curve of my lash a bit better. And I'm gonna see if I can just go behind the lash. And give a little brush. I think it needs a bit more fix. I can't stand dusty eyelashes. I'm that person on the tube that looks at people that have eyeshadow with no mascara, like they must be psychopaths, like who does that? So, another way I'm gonna try and salvage this is I am going to go on the backs of my lashes with the extended play. Ha 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 ha, you can't beat me, ha 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 ha. Right. So there you have it guys, this is the final look for today. God, that just took a turn I wasn't expecting. But um, sometimes I kind of like it when things like that happen on my channel because it shows everybody that nobody escapes makeup drama, makeup artist or not, like we all have those kind of encounters and you're just thinking like, oh, why is this happening? But that being said, I'm really happy with how the skin turned out and I think this might be my routine for a little while until I sort out this little uh, rash around the mouth and hopefully that will clear up very soon. Um, I would definitely consider doing my eyes after the skin if I was to do this again. So yeah, I I always learn something. There's always something new to learn. So yeah, that was kind of <laughs> today's takeaway for me. Anyway, I hope this gave you some inspiration into how you can use your holiday and Christmas makeup palettes and eyeshadow palettes and not just leave them collecting dust because with a little bit of play, there's a way you can kind of make them work for a very, very long time after all the tinsel has been packed away. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend, join the crew, and I'll see you on the next video. Take care, guys. Bye.